this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown if i'm on the mission is you riding like some michelin homie in the kitchen fire stones how he whipping it i be on my michigan blue and yellow vintage it's make a right on michigan 69 too hot for us stick on me like hockey puck penmanship like hamilton damn fool i go aaron burr 290 life just a blur now this picture you see on the thumbnail is from episode Episode 10 and the way it's set up it kind of remind me of Kanan and Ronnie's situation now that look like is Drew behind uh, Tyreek but I'm not a hundred percent sure if it is but if that do turn out to be Drew will this play out like it played out for Kanan now when we saw this situation, uh, Ronnie was standing there. He was waiting to receive the money. He went into the bag, looked at the money, said this beach money, and Kanan blew his brains out. Now, will Drew set up the ultimate play in order to save the family? Will Drew tell Tyreek, let's work together? Remember, episode seven says that the Tejadas and Tyreek will start working together. Hey, the back door wide open for niggas when they work with niggas that they don't really like or niggas they know don't like them so when i'm looking at this situation i'm just saying man this is crazy how can this be um and it looked like tyreek is in a position of power right here when you look at this thumbnail man he looked calm cool and collected he looks like he's not uh worried about anything he looked like he's in that mindset of i can't be stopped nothing's gonna stop me now when you look at the conversation he had with tasha in the uh preview clip of episode seven season four uh tyreek basically told her i can fix anything now i did hear a couple of channels say i can't fix anything but he said i can fix anything and tyrese Y'all know I meant Tyreek, but he got that can-do attitude. He just applying it wrong. I ain't gonna even lie, man. But anything, uh, any task that's put in front of him, any obstacle he can hurdle it, he'll go through the brick wall, he'll dig under the wall. He gonna do whatever he gotta do to get it done. But I'm wondering that if Ghost is gonna come back now, and that's the real reason I brought this up because at the end of everything, we saw Unique pop back into the scene. We saw Unique pop back into the scene after Ronnie got killed and now he's back. Now, could it be a possibility that Ghost shows back up in this moment, in this capacity? Um, now, if Ghost show back up, it doesn't necessarily mean that Ghost has to kill him. Maybe Ghost shows back up in order to help him. Now, one thing you have to understand that if Ghost is alive, if Ghost is alive, if Ghost is alive, he's relying on Tyreek to get that inheritance so either he can take it from him or either he's been following Tyreek to collect all this dirt on him and now he can blackmail Tyreek into doing whatever he wants him to do and he'll have that money. Uh, now, if Ghost is alive, there's no benefit in Tyreek being dead, even if Tyreek tried to kill him. And we got to remember, Ghost have had people do things to him, but he's played the long game. He could have been took him out, but he didn't. He waited until the right opportunity and he did what he had to do at the right point. Even though when he killed Rolla and he killed Rolla um, for no reason, he was lied to by Kanan, Ghost didn't kill Rolla until he was almost 100% sure. He made a call to Kanan. He asked Kanan what was going on. Kanan said that um, Rolla was down in Miami. Kanan said that Rolla had some hitters down there. Kanan was the one who hired Pinky, so he knew what she looked like. I mean, Pink Sneakers, so he knew what she looked like, and he basically fed Ghost the wrong information on purpose so Ghost could be isolated once he got out so he can try to take the organization from under Ghost's nose. But I say that to say, even if this situation plays out like Ronnie and Kanan's situation where they at a warehouse and Tyreek feel like he got the upper hand, I don't think that Tyreek is going to die. I think that Ghost is going to come and save the day. Y'all don't ask me why Ghost is going to come and save the day. I just told you. Ghost mutually benefits from Tyreek being alive. Because why? 
if Tyreek dies, guess what happens? Ghost inheritance goes to Tasha. And he know he not getting no money from Tasha. And if he kills Tasha, the money will go to Yaz. But Yaz is too young, so that money will go inside of a trust. And he'll have to wait years in order to get that. Y'all got to understand that this is chess, not checkers. So I believe that, you know, Tyreek is going to um, put everything in a place and you got to remember Tyreek whole thing is that he's trying to get out of the game. He's going to still have the baby Diana. He got her to look out for and she don't want him in the game. So what I believe that Tyreek is going to end up doing is he's going to try to blackmail somebody or he's going to lure them there with this situation in order to try to get the money he needs to get out the game. And that's not going to work out for him. And then another thing, we got to remember the last time that Tyreek was in a warehouse, he got bamboozled the first time and Brayden had to come and save the day. Now, I don't know if Brayden is still going to be his right-hand man because Brayden is not here in this scene in no capacity. So who knows what's going to happen to Brayden? Maybe Brayden leaves town and go with his family. Maybe Brayden gets killed. Um, maybe Brayden goes on the run. It's a lot of different things that could happen with this situation and that could happen to Brayden. Me personally, though, when I first got this photo, I instantly drew the parallel between what happened in Raising and Canaan. Um, this episode six was amazing, man. And if y'all haven't watched episode six or if you have watched episode six and you need uh, more understanding of it, go to my Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4 playlist and look for the episode six breakdown and predictions. And you'll be able to get everything out of that episode that you probably missed. Now, we back on the season. I'm definitely finna start dropping more videos. If y'all probably noticed, I've dropped more videos now than I've probably dropped in the last two weeks in like one day. And y'all know once it's on and popping, I'm looking for all the theories, all of this, all of that. And for those of y'all who don't understand how everything played out, the only thing I need you to do is go watch. Go watch what? Go watch Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Episode 10. And another thing that you got to understand is that when Tyreek went to the warehouse the first time, it was a plan that he came up with. Now, I think that Ghost could actually be communicating with him behind the scene and Ghost could actually be moving around making sure that Tyreek don't get into too much trouble or he don't get killed before that inheritance come. And Ghost could have actually told him about this situation. Now, I know a lot of y'all saying, well, Ghost isn't in Raising Canaan yet. So how would Ghost know that this happened? One, I do believe that Ghost is already in Raising Canaan season three and we'll see more of him in season four. But even if you're not in that situation, somebody can pass those stories on. When you think of like Greek mythology or when you think of the Bible, which I believe is real, I don't want to confuse Greek mythology with the Bible. But anyway, those stories were passed on from one person to another. And you know, when people in the streets, they can't keep their business to themselves when they're in the streets. They definitely want to share war stories. Stories. They definitely want to share them old stories. And if Ghost killed Breeze, he definitely would have heard that story about how Breeze came back and what Breeze set up. And that probably could have played into Ghost killing Breeze because Ghost was like, man, I got to get him before he get me. Because if he sensed that anything is wrong, he going to kill me. And we see the trailer with Unique, Unique is not playing, man. He's setting that Chinese place on fire, or he sent somebody to set that Chinese place on fire. He running into what appears to be the Chinese warehouse with two guns blazing. Hey, ain't nothing else to talk about, and Ghost has that same mentality. Speaking of Breeze or Unique or AKA Unibreeze, something that I coined, um, speaking of him running into that uh, Chinese uh, warehouse, with two guns blazing, I did a video, and I believe the video is called Breeze and Ghost War with the Chinese Easter Egg. So y'all can go check that out. Obviously, that's on my channel. Now, if you are a notification crony, the first thing you should do when you see a video, hit the like button. Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2, Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm Fairplay2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema and Salute.
Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2, Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm Fairplay2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema, and salute to all my cinema cronies. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair. If your favorite Chicago rapper turned his mixtape or album into a movie, it will be No Time to Play Fair, starring and directed by me, Fairplay2333.